guys, welcome to the best books of September. Um, I have six books I'm going to go over this month, and I know I'm doing this kind of late in October, but this is the first time I've gotten around to doing it, so that's how it is. Um, if you notice me like looking behind the camera, this is my super high tech way of cueing myself. I printed the books out and taped them on the wall behind the camera. So, um, yeah, I know it's like a really fancy cue box when you don't want to spend money on a prompting type of box. All right. So the first book I want to talk about is Retinence by uh, Gail Carriger, and that is the fourth book in the Custer Protocol series. I really love that series. I like steampunk anyways, and I really felt like the Custer Protocol series was uh, Carriger's like, strongest series. Um, and the fourth book was the final book. It was a long time coming. I think it took her a couple of years to write that book, but it was worth it. I love the characters. It's a super fun series, lots of adventure and of course, steampunk. There's a little bit of romance and I just really enjoyed the whole series. If you like steampunk and you like kind of fun young adult adventure books, um, I thought the whole series was really well done. Uh, it does tie in characters from like all of her previous series. So the adult series, the Parasol um, Protectorate, and then the other, I'm like blanking on the one, the Finishing School series as well. Um, all of those kind of get tied into the Custard Protocol series, but I did think the Custard Protocol was by far her best series. And I'm really looking forward to any other series she comes up with threats. Uh, the second book that was my favorite of September was The Unkindest Tide, which is the 13th book in the October Day series by Shannon McGuire. And I'm a huge Shannon McGuire fan, so this shouldn't be a surprise. I just feel like I'm always amazed. She turns out so many books. They're such high quality. They're so creative. You can tell she's super smart because she just comes up with some really neat, like, plot lines and there's like never inconsistencies in the books or anything like that. The Unkindest Tide introduces us to some, uh, I'm like, yeah, turn it. But some some new people. It's a whole like new thing. You get to deal with the Sea Queen a lot. Um, Ludig. I don't want to say your name. Anyways, the the Sea Witch is in there a lot, and uh, she's one of my favorite characters in the whole series. And of course, Tybalt and um, Toby are. October are looking at getting married, and so there's a little bit of that in there. Um, I really loved it. I think that's been. A very solid series by McGuire. It's my favorite that she's written, and I've read all of her books, including the ones written under Mira Grant. So, uh, you know, I loved it. I thought it was great. If you're a big October Day series fan, I think you really would love The Unkindness Tide. And I apologize. Most of these are series that I'm going through. So the next one was another final book in the series that I really, really loved, and that is Sword and Pin by Rachel Kane. This is the final book in the Great Library series, and I just feel like with this whole series, Rachel Kane like really upped her game as a writer. The world was so like detailed and creative, and the characters were amazing. The story was engaging. There's action and intrigue and a little bit of romance, and it was just really well done. This whole series was well done, and I thought the final book tied everything up so so well and I read a ton of books there aren't a lot of series that I would consider going back and like rereading the whole series but this is one where I would I just loved I love this series the whole premise of the library of Alexandria like running the whole world is just amazing and uh watching these characters try to keep it from being corrupt is pretty cool so love this series again a little bit of steampunk there's some magic adventure lots of intrigue politics adventure war, all that kind of stuff. Really good series. I highly recommend it. I love the series. I thought the final book was just like the icing on the cake. So the next two books I'm going to talk, well, actually the next three are graphic novels. Um, two of them I still have here. The first one I want to talk about is The Girl from the Other Side, Volume 7 by Nagabe. Um, this manga series is kind of appropriate for like all ages. It says teen, but uh, it's you know, pretty innocuous as far as content. Um, I really like, I like the dry, it has a creative drawing style. So I like the drawing style in here. It's kind of different from other, you know, manga series out there. It also has a very like fairy tale feel to it. I know my husband's son aren't as big of a fan of the series because they think it's kind of boring because it has been moving slow, but it's got kind of this like magical fairy tale feel to it. Um, a lot of people have compared it to Ancient Magus Bride, and it does kind of have that vibe because 
this guy is an outsider and, you know, the outsiders are forbidden from interacting with human because they have a disease that makes the human turn into monsters. And this is a little girl who's been disowned by her family because she supposedly caught this disease, but she hasn't turned into a monster and they don't know why. So I really like this. Um, initially, it's a lot about just teacher and Shiva, like learning how to interact because he's not used to dealing with humans and they kind of form this father daughter relationship. But as it goes on, it gets more involved with like the outside world and some of her anomaly anomalies as a young girl and why she's not turning into a monster. So I really like it. I love, I, I just really like it. And it's one of these ones I don't think everyone is going to like, cause it does move at a slower rate. It's a little bit more artistic. Um, but I love it, and I will keep reading it. I don't know if my son and husband will keep reading it. They like Ancient, Ancient Magic Bride a lot better. But, all right. So the fifth book, I believe I'm on the fifth book, uh, that I want to talk was an art graphic novel. And this is another one. It's great for all ages. And that is My Jack in Zeta's Space Girl by Ben Hackey. Um, this is kind of a collision between Zeta the Space Girl and Mighty Jack. Uh, at the end of the Life's Maddie Jack book, Zeta the Space Girl and all the people from that series kind of show up. And then this and this one, they have to work together to defeat some evil alien space invasion kind of thing. Uh, so Mighty the Jack is very like fantasy. Zeta the Space Girl is very sci-fi. This one, they both come together. And I have loved, I love Zeta the Space Girl. I love Mighty Jack. Having them come together in this book is amazing. I hope it's not the final book, but it was kind of set up to be like the final book in those two series. So it's the third Mighty the Jack one, and I believe the fifth, or no, fourth Zeta the Space Girl book. And I loved it. Uh, you know, the illustration is awesome. Um, it incorporates a lot of interesting elements. So like... Mighty Jack's sister is highly autistic, and I kind of like that. Like, they have a girl and that's autistic, so they show, like, some of her issues and then how she can contribute as well. So uh, I have a, a friend with an art autistic child, and I've been like, you know what? At some point, you might want to have her read these because it's, it's really nice how it just shows. It shows that in a way that isn't, you know, it shows it in a good way. These are very positive graphic novels and a lot about friendship and family and, you know, but there's also a lot of adventure, magic, and action and a, a lot of fun stuff and they're just so fun to read so if you at all like um like middle grade graphic novel kind of things and you enjoy kind of these brightly colored fantasy sci-fi graphic novels i highly recommend this whole series i think it's great for both kids and adults and me and my son love it um this is one i've reread multiple times my son rereads them all the time so we buy them new and we keep them <laughs> because we just love that series all right, so the last graphic novel I read, I got from the library, so I don't have it here with me, but that is Illegal by, Ian, I'm going to say his name wrong, Ian Kofer, Andrew Duncan, and Giovanni Regano. Um, this was another one I gave five stars this month, and I this was really good. It wasn't really an easy read, but it was really good. It's about a boy in, now I'm going to blank, somewhere in Africa who ends up trying to move, I can't remember the country, anyways, who ends up, his brother like leaves and is going to try to journey to Europe to find a new life because their sister has already fled the country and journeyed to Europe. And then he wakes up and finds those brothers gone, decides to go find his brother, and they're trying to work to get on a ship to come to Europe to, to basically make a new start for themselves. Um, up to that point, like their uncle had been taking care of them and he had a really bad drinking problem and wasn't really taking care of them. Of course, they're living in really bad circumstances where there isn't any food or shelter or anything. Um, so it's basically about illegal immigration into Europe. And this was an amazing book, like just watching what they went through and how all the, the frames were drawn and the story was set up. It's one of those books that not only was like really well put together, it's very impactful. And it's based on some true events that happened with illegal immigration into Europe. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just a good book. And it's a book that like kids can read as well. My son read it. He was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that kind of thing happens. Um, 
I don't know. I don't even know how to explain it. Like the illustration was just amazing. The story was amazing. It was both disturbing and like hopeful and so many emotions and it broaches a topic that's super important now, especially me living in the United States with Trump as a president right now. Um, I'm not going to get into my political views, but it's really important for us to like work as a cohesive world together to like progress stuff. And my son and I were discussing this. Like, I think things in general are better for people for the most part, like just looking at what he goes through in like middle school and school, I feel like his friends are more supportive of each other. The teachers are more supportive. And I do feel like at work personally, I collaborate a lot more with people internationally. And a lot of times I'm working with these people in our countries to solve problems and do stuff like that. And this kind of global collaboration to make the whole world a better place for everybody is really important. And it's, something that isn't directly addressed in this book, but just showing how how some parts of the world still could really use a lot of help and how people are trying and putting so much effort and taking on so much risk to try to come to a place where they can have a better life. Um, it was just a really good story. So uh, yeah, I got a little diverted on that, but Illegal was a really good graphic novel. And it's one of those, like, I wish everybody would read just to just because it's good, it's really well put together, but also just to make sure you're thinking and aware of these issues. And it's something my son, I don't think, has had a lot of exposure to. So he was he was really interested in that. So, um, yeah. So those are the six books I got in September that I gave five stars to and I really, really loved. Um, I almost decided to, you know, to combine the September and October ones because I am so doing this so late in the month of October. But... I'll go ahead and just do the September one and hopefully get to the October one in a couple weeks. Um, yeah, we're getting ready to go to a gaming convention soon, and that's always very exciting for us. And I am filming this with the window open, so the lighting is a little bit different because I needed to be able to, like, tape my little cheat sheet behind the camera. So um, it's hard to tape to the curtains, so, you know, all those fun logistical things. Um, we are finally getting into winter here in Minnesota. Uh I know it's only October and I, we always feel like fall is my favorite season. And I feel like we like miss it half the time. Like it was like 80. And then I think last Monday, like all the leaves just boom, fell off the tree in like a day or two. And now we're looking at, I think there's a possible snowstorm this coming week and highs are going to be in the upper thirties, lows in the twenties. So I would kind of consider that the start of winter. I mean, we do get really, really cold here, but once we start getting down into the twenties, that's when the winter gear comes out it's not just wearing sweatshirts outside anymore you actually have to like wear a coat <laughs> so and gloves like there's always that first week it's in the 20s where I'm driving to work and my hands are numb the whole time because I forgot my gloves and I'm like oh my god I wish I had my gloves but uh yeah so we're finally getting into winter and starting to think a little bit about Christmas I hate to say that but I always do my Christmas shopping like after Halloween and try to get it done before Thanksgiving so I don't have to worry about it um, so we're, we're starting to talk about what are we doing for Christmas and stuff. Um, we did decide this year, instead of buying like presents for our family, like our immediate family, we are going to go on a trip to San Francisco. Um, we're going to leave Christmas night and kind of stay out there till New Year's Eve. So I'm excited about that. It's the first time we've tried that. And it's actually pretty cheap to fly on Christmas. And it's also pretty cheap to stay in a touristy area like San Francisco in a hotel during that time between Christmas and New Year's. Um, New Year's Eve is not cheap. We are leaving before New Year's Eve, but the time in between, it's, it seems like it's really easy to get lodging and it's really cheap and, you know, I think it'll be fun. So, um, yeah, maybe it'll become a new tradition for us. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed my post about my best, my favorite <laughs> books of September. Um, I probably won't talk to you next week because I will be at a gaming convention. So yeah, hope you have a great week. Got a lot of great books to read and I will talk to you in a couple weeks. All right. Talk to you later. Bye.